our next speaker uh, is going to be uh, Jennifer Fernandez. She right now is uh, currently uh, the City Council Program Assistant at the CUNY Citizenship Now. And he, she is pursuing her bachelor degree at Queens College, one of the CUNY uh, uni, uh, colleges, uh, in economics and graphic design with a minor in business and liberal art honors program and honors in humanity. As the city council program assistant for CUNY citizenship now, she is responsible for evaluating, creating, implementing, and managing softwares and web applications system to improve efficiency in events and, le and legal services provide to the community. She is also responsible for facilitating technology use among staff for project ad advancements and is uh, easy of communications among the organization by uh, utilizing and creating efficiency among, among the organization using SharePoint. Ms. Fernandez currently serves as a, uh, the deputy chair for the Academy Senate and the Student Government Association, a senator at large and uh, at Queens uh, College. She's also the vice chair for fiscal and fundraising of CUNY Dreamers, a student-run organization that represents undoc uh, undocumented students. So let me welcome uh, Jennifer Fernandez, who also accepted our invitation to share their, uh, her experience with you today. Good morning, guys. How's everyone? Oh, I'll try that again. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so technology, we love it, but sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes feel like it's like information overload just because there's so much available. It was actually not too long ago when I was sitting where you are today uh, thinking of life and everything that I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish, but I might have not known exactly how I was going to get there. I knew that I needed to go to college, graduate, and somehow, magically, I'm going to get my dream job. Um, which sounds like a piece of cake, but with the technology that is available today, it is not a matter of just filling out an application and getting a job, but it's making yourself shine more than the person next to you by being familiar and knowledgeable of all the resources that are available to make you the most qualified and desirable applicant. Initially, when I enrolled in CUNY, my goal was to finish school as fast as I can at Kingsborough Community College. I, was thinking of, I wasn't thinking about joining any clubs, any organizations. I actually didn't even know that that even existed at that time. I didn't know there was something more than just going to class from college. I never dreamed or knew that there was so much more to just college than classes. For me, it all started one day by me reading the flyers that are posted around campus. Um, and particularly, one caught my attention because it said student government officer's nomination. Well, I didn't have a clue what student government was. I didn't, you know, when you say officer, you're thinking of like, oh, is that like an executive position? Is that a job? So I popped by student affairs and I asked a question of what exactly is student government? What exactly what did that flyer mean? So what happened was uh, the young lady, her name was Maria. You know, she was like, oh, we're gonna have a meeting to discuss it in like 10 minutes. So, you know, I was, on a, I was on one of those, you know, breaks from in between class and I was like, I'll give it a try. So I went to the meeting, not knowing that this meeting will actually change my life forever. It really did. I never thought in a million years that reading the different flyers would lead me to anything. I never knew, and in fact, in reading those flyers and attending those events, is what actually opened doors for me that I never knew even existed. And it has provided me with the tools needed not only to be successful at my studies, but to prepare me for my future endeavors within CUNY and my professional career. With reading that one flyer, 
that one flyer that you don't even think can change your life. I have been able to host several CUNY-wide conferences. Like a, I did one conference when I was at Kingsborough. I did a business co uh, conference. I wanted to show the students that there was something more outside of college, that you can do things in, you know, being a student, you can open up your business. If you want to be in the entertainment industry, you can do that as well. And I had different speakers to not only show students in CUNY that we have resources within CUNY, but CUNY also has a connection outside that is so much bigger than what we know. I also was able to do, um, together as a team with the CUNY Dreamers, we were able to do another conference to also assist and provide information for undocumented students to know what their resources are, what this, the, the support team that they have, and just to show them that resources do exist. In doing those things and accomplishing certain of those things. I actually was selected out of two students to be part of the chancellor search for the City University of New York. Honestly, I didn't even know that a search committee existed to find a person's employment. I didn't know that if you ever wanted to be on top on one of the executive level, it's not one person who makes that decision. It's not one hiring manager. It's probably about 15 to 20 people deciding which candidate is their best for their campus. And with that, I was also able to do the, the um, search for my president at Queens College, Felix Matos, and we just finished doing a provost search as well. So I just want, I'm telling you guys this, not more for like, these are the things that I have done, but it's more to show you guys that if you guys just go outside that box, there are things that we don't even know yet and we haven't even accomplished yet and don't even know that exists that we can all do at the same time. I am blessed and I'm very thankful for those opportunities that I have gained and I hope to be able to share them with you, my knowledge and resources that I'm aware of in order for each and every one of you guys to be as successful or even more successful in the future. As a student, we have so many resources. We have companies giving us free softwares. We have companies just wanting to actually help us and assist us. They want, they want actually to help us accomplish our academic goals, like this off, awesome conference today that has, created, that has been created to make us the most successful Hispanic and Latino and other students with the accessibility and knowledge of technology and its uses. So what, are the, so what are some of the resources that we have available? We have access to free software. Did you guys know that Microsoft Office actually, if you, um, certain campuses provide you with now Office 365, which I have a weird feeling that Google, you know, inspired that in some way, shape, or form with Google Drive. Um, but these are some of the resources. On the hub.com also, um, since I know not everyone here is from CUNY, they actually give you the ability to search for your campuses to see what are the free softwares and different things that your campus actually offers you as a student. Um, if you are a CUNY student, we have the CUNY email. You just have to visit your CUNY portal and they have it there. You can get clothes, you can get software. There's many different, uh, things that you can actually get free of charge. And if it's not free of charge, it's like extremely cheap. Now, when it comes to financial aid, scholarships, you can go to something called fastweb.com. They'll allow you to plan your career as well. And they'll give you a track and also give you information about colleges, financial aid. I also know that I actually didn't put here, but John Jay has like a, a video of questions. Like they have like different little segments of this is financial aid and different little questions that you can also go on their website. And as Leo mentioned before, lynda.com is an extremely good resources to actually learn many things. I, I, I don't know what lynda.com Linda does not have. Like you can pretty much teach yourself anything. Um, career path, which is something we're really interested either during our time in college or just once we like finish and graduate. Um, there's something called the Edward T. Grogowski program. It's a program, they have several programs. It's, I'm pretty, I think it's dedicated for CUNY and SUNY students. Um, and you can do different things like Model Senate. You actually mock Model Senate. You actually study a law. At the time I did, it was hydrofracking and it was you know Democrats and Republicans and we went out and we debated and we 
had to go and talk to each other like we were politicians. And all these different experiences that you can get within your campuses just by visiting student government, reading those flyers and things like that will move you and teach you so many different things. Some campus resources that I really suggest are to visit your career departments. They actually have the ability and the resources to help you, even if, like, say you don't know how to do a resource, and then when you look online and you do one, you want to double check. You want to have someone proofread it and make sure that you did your resume correctly. Your campuses do have the resources for it. Uh, there's also different mentorship programs. I know for student affairs, there's something called NASPA Undergraduate Fellows Program. They also have a graduate fellows program, if you guys have. And mentorship is extremely, extremely important and key. And so as technology, technology is also an important instrument in our life. Whether you guys are using media, you guys are texting, checking Facebook, Twitter, it's like almost every minute of our lives are documented online. Either, so social media can also be used with like your family and friends, especially if they're from different, um, they're in different states, different countries and different states, but either you use them for college assignments or you actually use them at work on your daily life. Technology rules the world. We no longer say I'm going to ask Jeeves, which was an old search engine. We just say we're gonna Google it regardless of what search engine we're going to use. Technology has actually led me to the many opportunities and has given me the knowledge and wisdom that I have gained today by, being, by getting familiar with technology and consistently making myself improve on it. It's what has gotten me to achieve many things, from creating a newspaper from scratch that I had no idea on how to do. I just decided one day to help the student government and be like, sure, I'll create a news, newspaper, not realizing that you need to know layouts and templates and stuff, and then I learned that on my own, all the way to informing and advocating for different types of things in life, for dreamers, for policy changes, for things that I wanted to change in the environment. These things is actually what got me hired by CUNY Citizenship Now. I took the first steps by taking advantage of organizations like HES, 100 Hispanic Women, Malave Leadership Academy, Edward T. Rogowski, and I can name so, so many of them. And I would be so, like, I don't mind telling you guys the many programs that I'm aware of that can probably help you and assist you because there's honestly a lot of resources out there. So what are some tips that I have for you guys? Get involved in your campus as much as possible. Your opportunities are endless in your time in school, and you would not know what is gonna end up happening after an event or after you participate in something because life changes on its own. Mentorship is key. I cannot say enough how having mentors and having a mentor can help you in your life. They will guide you, they will prepare you professionally, personally, they'll make you understand who you are more and how to make you get more effective. And the way you can get a mentor is just asking a professor, speaking to student affairs, speaking to the finance department, or anyone that you just maybe, you pass by on every day and you say hi to staff, que ask questions. You'll be surprised of how many staff members will actually love to actually mentor you throughout your college career and even more so. And be open to all the opportunities. I know sometimes we're like tired, we, you know, we're on spring break right now, but look, you guys are here. This is not an opportunity that you guys are taking and getting so many resources are, and hopefully you're gonna enjoy. So all of you have taken the first few steps in becoming successful in your lives. One, you've entered college, and two, you're taking the opportunities like this conference to making yourselves the most qualified and desirable applicant for your dream job. Before I actually started getting active and right before I registered for school at Kingsborough Community College, you know, I had like this vision, this vision of like my dream job. I wanted to be in business, I wanted to work in corporate, and like all of us, we want to be like millionaires. But you know, when you start becoming active in school and you're working and 
you start seeing that you can actually be effective and change policies and change people's lives, you definitely realize that you do not need to make millions in order for you to be happy. You just need to be satisfied at your job when you come on an everyday basis. This is why I actually love working for Citizenship Now. Never did I think in a million years I was gonna work for a department that provides legal services. I did have a very small dream when I was young, like I wanted to become an attorney. But you know, sometimes they tell you, oh, you know, being an attorney's hard, you know, the LSAT, you might not pass it, oh, you're gonna fail, oh, the bar. And people put like 50,000 excuses for anything that you wanna do. Always remember, ignore those excuses, go for what you want, live your dreams, and forget anything that anyone says. As long as you're not doing something bad, this is your success, your dreams, and you should never let anyone stop you from it. Because eventually, if you are supposed to do that dream, you're gonna get back on track and you will do it. So Citizenship Now, just to give you guys a brief, it actually provides free legal services to everyone. Yes, we are on CUNY, but we actually work for the public. We do events every month. We have centers that, per, that, have, that we have actually attorneys and paralegals to help you guys in anything if you need it in immigration. So doing this um, and doing all these volunteers and events and stuff is actually where I use technology the most, not only for college campuses, but it's also to improve the services that we provide to everyone. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we stop going from paper and using five different programs in order to make sure that we get one event going when we can use, you know, like we actually started using like Google Drive, but now we're actually, we're at a capacity where we're moving that I have to create SharePoint in order for us to be all centralized in one location. But sometimes it might be hard to envision something. Sometimes you come to conferences and you see people speak and you're like, man, how did that person get there? I have no idea. You just do your job and for some reason you have people, you will actually literally be here one day standing, no joke aside, and you're going to speak about your experiences and how it has helped you. I never, never imagined that I would be standing here today sharing my story, my experience, and the knowledge that I have gained from my experience, not only as a CUNY student, but just personally and professionally as well. So hopefully, I know this is about technology, so I need to show you guys maybe some tricks. I know maybe some of these tricks might be knowledgeable, but I know there's some keyboard shortcuts that you know, I used to think it was like annoying before, but eventually they actually are pretty good. So like control C is copy, control V, you can paste. And sometimes when you're trying to do things really quick, it's, it's better than, you know, selecting all, right click, copy, go your other file, right click and paste. It takes a while. Um, also, Microsoft Word is actually, um, I put the link here because they have many new videos as well. They have different shortcuts, um, but, the one trick I, I wanted to show you guys because I found out maybe not all students know. You know those essays we always have to write for classes and professors are like very adamant about your works cited page or your bibli bibliography page? There's a trick. Oops. So Microsoft actually does it for you. So just in case, just to show you a little trick, we're gonna go to References, insert citation, add a new source, and let's say I'm going to use, where's Google? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm just going to find a book. That way I can. Okay. Okay, 
So I don't know the name of any particular book right, right, right now, but I'm just gonna do a, a dummy version. So you come here and you're gonna insert citation, you're gonna add a new source and say, um, actually the way I do it is I just go straight to where it says bibliography and it drops down to works cited. It automatically does the format. So I'm gonna click works cited. It's right there. All I need to do is insert, add new source. Let's say it's a book. Let's say it's Hess Conference. We're gonna put a, a title of it, Making Us Successful. Twenty fifteen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I think it recorded that by accident. So I'm gonna fix it, but you just click on it and it will automatically, I didn't finish doing everything because it just went. So I'm just gonna edit citation again. Hold on. So just in case I showed all of it, that way you guys can see all the different formats that it has and just for you to fill in. And then you just click OK, say yes. And then, oh, we close. And then we refresh. And there you go. And it does your citation. So I hope that I've actually shown you something or maybe make you inspired. Um, so I'm open up for any questions and answers that you guys have. I am so willing to tell you about so many resources that you guys can have. Um, you said that you knew what you wanted to major in and study before you went to school. Now that you've been involved and had the opportunity to experience different fields, did that change your mind about what you want to study and focus on? It definitely has. I mean, I was on the business track. I just wanted to do business administration. I wanted to do my bachelor's in business, my master's in business. I just wanted to get it done in business. And what I learned through all the different like internships I've had and stuff like that is that companies want you to be more diverse. I even had like I remember sitting at one of like the student conferences dinner and it was like the vice chancellor of, you know, the university. And first of all, I didn't know he was a vice chancellor and I didn't even know how big his title was. But he honestly was like you don't need to focus so much on the title and the type of degree that you have, especially for undergrad. Because at that point, I actually had economics and dance, which is obviously like two different things. And the simple advice he actually gave me was, it doesn't matter what you do, the more diverse you are, it's fine. It's an undergrad, have fun with it, because it's not, once you hit graduate school, it's not that fun anymore. It's gonna be more like work and more knowledgeable. But every time you work in either a different department or you do these internships, it's always gonna change something about you. You're gonna find out something about yourself that you were not aware of before. Like, if you would've asked me just maybe three years ago, maybe two, there would have been no way I would have told you that I was gonna be in a legal service department and I was thinking about going and becoming an attorney. Like it's not even, it wasn't even a thought. Like for me, becoming an attorney, I was like, oh, like that's gonna take so much work or maybe I'm a little bit older. But it, all those experiences do eventually make you change. And that's why when I said, whatever you're meant to be eventually, and somehow someone convinces you not to, I consider it, yes, everything is meant to be, but you're gonna go back on that track what you always wanted to do. It's just, we have so many like obstacles sometimes with life, with struggles, with like, sometimes we're in such a hole that we don't see like the light at the end of the tunnel. 
that it sometimes obscures like what we want to do, what we what is that passion? And sometimes there are industries like you know the art industry where not everyone looks like you know so great upon, but there are very very successful people in the art industry and stuff like that. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but if it's more particular, yeah. So you're saying it's okay to be confused about what you, like I'm doing my associates right now, so it's okay to kind of, you know, not really know what you want, and then once you go to your bachelor's, can you still kind of decide there, like what you want, and then wait, like, because I feel like I have to make a decision right now, and I'm like, you know, I'm in between things, and I'm still kind of like finding myself, so I'm like, do you have to make a decision as of right now about what you want, because you know, it's like, what if you don't know, you know, you kind of don't want to do, don't want to make a decision for the rest of your life that's going to affect you. So it's like, is, is it okay to kind of just figure it out with time on your own? That's actually a very good question. And my advice to everyone is that you don't need to know what you want to do the first day you actually go to college. That is actually the number one mistake everyone makes. You still? No, honestly, a lot of people, I think, a lot of people that I know that have graduated, like in any degree that they have, they don't, it's not even what they do. And I think it's perfectly fine to not know what you want to do. Like say you did an associates and you're not sure what you want to do for your bachelor's. Don't think of having a bachelor's as like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Because in all honesty, it's, it's not really that. Sometimes you, I don't know, you become like, an, like a lawyer and then you become like a chief of staff or you might be a mathematician, but you end up being a politician. Um, so don't, don't focus and think, do something that you like. And I think if you're still trying to figure out what you like, take a bunch of different classes. I, that's honestly like what I did. Like when I went to Kingsborough, I wanted to take like so many different things. I took art classes, computer classes, Next time? I actually was. I was in um, business administration, um, but I, you always have that option where you can take a couple classes sometimes, depending upon what is your credit limit, um, of figuring out like, oh, do you want to do this? And sometimes it's really fine when you take random classes that are outside of your major, is that you like those things more than probably what your major is and stuff. So don't, don't think of your bachelor's as this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life, but just think of it as whatever you're doing as your bachelor's or whatever you decide to do in your bachelor's, eventually you will use it in your life. You might not use it all at one shot, but you'll eventually use maybe bits and parts of it like going forward in the future. But don't, trust me, don't stress it because I didn't, I, 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 like I said, I thought I was focused and I was gonna do business and I'm not even, I'm not even close to being in like corporate or you know, in, in that level, but don't, please don't, don't. That, I think that's the, the, the myth that we, we all come to college and we're like, I need to know what I need to do. I, this is, I need to graduate by like five years. Like no, mix it up with a little life experience and you'll be like, I, I got this. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dan.